My name is Adrian Durkin. I am an outreach officer at Dudley Museum Service. This is one of a series of talks about paintings owned by our service. This painting is by the artist Thomas Phillips of Arctic explorer Sir John Franklin. The artist, Thomas Phillips, was born in Dudley in 1770. He began his career as a glass painter, not at all unusual in this area, which is famous for its glass production. He studied in Birmingham under Francis Eggington and probably helped him with painting the windows of St Philip's Cathedral. In 1790, Phillips moved to Windsor, where he worked on painted glass in St George's Chapel. He joined the Royal Academy Schools in 1791 and exhibited his first painting of Windsor Castle in 1792. From 1796 onwards, Phillips was working on portraits. It was an overcrowded profession and he seems to have earned his bread and butter completing over 700 works. We have an example of his early work here in the Dudley Collection. It was painted in 1798 and is called The Parade of the Loyal Association. It is one of his history paintings. John Franklin was born in 1786 in Lincolnshire. He was English naval officer and explorer who led an ill-fated expedition in search of the North West Passage, a Canadian Arctic waterway connecting the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. In 1800, at the age of 14, Franklin entered the Royal Navy. By the time he was 32, he had fought three major sea battles, had been part of two research expeditions, one to Australia and one to the Arctic, and was promoted to the rank of captain. He commanded a second expedition to the Arctic in 1819. Franklin was making quite a reputation for himself, so much so that he was knighted in 1829 and served as Governor of Tasmania from 1836 to 1843. In 1845, Franklin was appointed to command a new expedition to find the North West Passage. He sailed from England with two ships, the Erebus and the Terror, carrying 128 officers and men. The vessels were last sighted in late July. In 1847, search parties were sent out, but for 12 years their fate was unknown until a new search mission found skeletons of the vessel's crew and a written account of the expedition up to April the 25th, 1848. It recorded that Franklin himself had died in 1847. And so to our painting. There are several enigmas. We don't know exactly when it was painted, but I believe it was around 1828, because in many other portraits of Sir John, he can be seen showing his knighthood as a medal around his neck or indeed two other orders that he was given. Sir John Franklin died at the age of 61. The portrait here is of a significantly younger man, possibly in his 40s or even 50s. Secondly, there are eight known versions of the portrait. The Dudley version appears to be a replica of one in, Dudley, in Birmingham Art Gallery. The Birmingham picture was first exhibited in 1829. That version is unsigned and seems to be of inferior quality to the Dudley one. It is possible that Phillips became dissatisfied with the original and repainted the portrait a number of times, one version of which was donated to Dudley's collection. In the drama series, The Terror, Chiron Hines plays Sir John. He looks the part of an explorer with a rugged face that you'd expect from a Navy man with a tre track record of exploration. The oil on canvas painting of Sir John portrays a rather kindly, rounded, sympathetic face with chubby cheeks and a receding hairline. His eyes have a quality which bring the whole picture to life. He's dressed in a black stock, white shirt, blue coat, which is possibly naval, as it has gilt buttons and appears to have epaulettes, and a black cloak with a gilt chain. This compares well with the naval un uniform 
worn by Karen Huns in the photograph from the series The Terror. Phillips died in 1845, aged 85. Franklin died in 1847. It is possible that in the aftermath of his unsuccessful voyage there was a demand for pictures of him and the 1828 portrait was copied. One last fact is that until he was proven to be dead, Franklin was assumed to be alive and in 1852 he was promoted to Rear Admiral. Unfortunately it turned out he was already dead, making the man who ate his shoes, a nickname given to him after a previous expedition, the only person to be promoted after he died.